Good day everyone, my name is Kenneth Imagbato and today I will be sharing to you the information I have gained from the various sources encompassing my topic about Mintzberg's coordinating mechanisms of structure. But before we proceed and delve deeper about coordinating mechanisms of structure, let us first get to know Henry Mintzberg. So, who is Henry Mintzberg? Henry Mintzberg was born in 1939 and he is an internationally renowned academic author and researcher. He is currently a professor of management studies at the Desotel's Faculty of Management of MacGill University in the Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And one of his famous management theories is the theory of the 10 managerial roles. Since we already have a brief um, summary of Henry Mintzberg, now at this juncture, let us talk about coordinating mechanism. A coordination mechanism is a subsystem of the social system that coordinates the activities of the persons or organizations within it. Wherever a relation subsists between two or more persons or organizations, their activities require coordination in some form. Henry Mintzberg suggests that organizations can be differentiated along three basic dimensions and these are number one, the key part of the organization that is the part of the organization that plays the major role in determining its success or failure. Number two is the prime coordinating mechanism that is the major method that the organization uses to coordinate its activities. And the last one, number three, the type of decentralization used. That is the extent to which the organization involves subordinates in the decision-making process using the three basic dimensions, the key part of the organization, the prime coordinating mechanism, the type of decentralization, Mintzberg suggests that the three strategy an organization adopts and the extent to which it practices that uh, strategy result in five structural configurations and these are the simple structure, the machine bureaucracy, the professional bureaucracy, the divisionalized form, and the last one is the ad hocracy. Now, let us proceed to the key parts of an organization. So we have the first one, the strategic apex. It is the top management and it, it supports the staff. In school districts, this is the superintendent of schools and administrative cabinet. We also have the operative core. These are the workers who actually carry out the organization's tasks. Teachers constitute the operative core in school districts. We also have the middle line is middle and lower level management. Principals are the middle level managers in school districts. We also have the techno structure. Uh, the techno structure are analysts such as engineers, accountants, planners, researchers, and personnel managers. In school districts, divisions such as instruction, business, personnel, public relations, research and development, and the like constitute the, con the, uh, the techno structure. We also have the support staff. And these are the people who provide indirect services in school districts. Similar services include maintenance, um, clerical, food service, busing, legal counsel, and consulting to provide support. The second basic dimension of an organization is its prime coordinating mechanism. This includes the following. The first one is a direct supervision, which means that one individual is responsible of the work of others. This concept refers to the unity of command and scholar principles. Through specific orders or one-to-many monitoring of the work processes, this usually means that every worker or group reports directly to one manager. A manager may have to supervise several groups increasing the span of control. We also have the standardization of work process. Standardization of work process exists when the content of work is specified or programmed. In school districts, this refers to job descriptions that govern the work performance of educators. Every work process follows a predefined path and a set of rules. We also have the standardization of skills. Standardization of skills exists when the kind of training necessary to do, to do the work is specified. In school systems, this refers to state certificates required for the various occupants of school districts hierarchy to ensure that everyone has the same knowledge and qualifications. 
We also have the standardization of outputs. So standardization of output exists when the results of the work are specified. Because the raw material that is processed by the operative core, which are the teachers, consists of people, the students, not things, standardization of output is more difficult to measure in schools than in other non-service organizations. Nevertheless, a movement toward um, the standardization of output in schools in recent years has occurred. Examples include um, competency testing of teachers, state-mandated testing of students, um, state-mandated curricula, prescriptive learning objectives, and other efforts toward, uh, toward legislated learning. Sets up measures for the outcomes of the work. Mutual adjustment exists when work is coordinated through informal communication. Mutual adjustment or coordination is the major thrust of Likert's 1987 linking pin concept. Informal communication um, lets individual coordinate their work and communication between peers are the crucial activity which makes this possible. As a result of a high level of cooperation, it is used equally and often in both very small and simple organization. The third basic dimension of an organization is the type of decentralization it employs. The three types of decentralization are the following. We have the first one, the vertical decentralization. It is the distribution of power down the chain of command or shared authority between super, um, superordinates and subordinates in, in any organization. We also have the horizontal decentralization that is um, to the extent which non-administrators including staff uh, makes decision or shared authority between line and staff. We also have the selective decentralization is uh, the extent to which decision-making power is delegated to different units within the organization. In school districts, these units might include instruction, business, personnel, public relations, and research and development divisions. Using the three basic dimensions, key parts of the organization, the prime coordinating mechanism, and the type of decentralization, Mintzberg suggests that the strategy an organization adopts and the extent to which it practices that strategy result in five structural configurations. Um, these are the simple structure, the machine bureaucracy, the professional bureaucracy, the visionalized form, and the adhocracy. There are also very important terms that are coined here. We have the simple structure. The simple structure has as, um, its key part, the strategic apex, uses direct supervision and employs vertical and horizontal centralization. Examples of simple structures are relatively small corporations, the new government departments, medium-sized retail stores, and small elementary school districts. The organization consists of the top manager and few workers in the operative core. There is no techno structure and the support staff is small. Workers perform overlapping tasks. For example, teachers and administrators in small elementary school districts must assume many of the duties that the techno structure and support staff perform in larger districts. Frequently, However, small elementary school districts are members of cooperatives that provide many services that is um, counselors, um, social workers to a number of small school districts in one region of the country or state. In small school districts, the superintendent may function as both superintendent of the district and principal of a single school. Superintendents in such um, school districts must be entrepreneurs. Because the organization is small, coordination is informal and maintained through direct supervision. Moreover, this organization can adapt to environmental changes rapidly, goal stress, innovation, and long-term survi survival. Although, innovation may be difficult for very small rural school districts because of the lack of resources. We also have the term uh, machine bureaucracy. Machine bureaucracy has the techno structure as its key part. It uses the standardization of work processes as its prime coordinating mechanism and employs limited horizontal decentralization. Machine bureaucracy has many of the characteristics of Weber's 1947 
ideal bureaucracy and resembles Hage 1965 mechanistic organization. It has a high it has a high degree of formalization and work specialization. Decisions are centralized. The span of management is narrow and the organization is tall that is many levels exist in the chain of command from top manager to the bottom of the organization. Little horizontal or, la or lateral coordination is needed. Furthermore, machine bureaucracy has a large techno structure and support staff. Example of machine bureaucracy are automobile manufacturers, uh, manufacturers, steel companies, and large government organizations. The environment for a machine bureaucracy is typically stable, and the goal is to achieve internal efficiency. Public schools possess many characteristics of machine bureaucracy, but most schools are not machine bureaucracies in the pure sense. However, large urban school districts, um, New York, Los Angeles, Los Angeles and um, Chicago are closer to machine bureaucracies than other medium-sized or small school districts. We also have the professional bureaucracy. Professional bureaucracy has the operating core as its key part. It uses um, standardization of skills as its prime coordinating mechanism and it employs vertical and horizontal decentralization. The organization is relatively formalized but decentralized to provide autonomy to professionals. Highly trained professionals provide non-routine services to clients. Top management, uh, management is small. There are few middle managers and the techno structure is generally small. However, the support staff is typically large to provide clerical and maintenance support for the professional and operating core. The goals of professional bureaucracies are to innovate and provide high quality services. Existing in complex but stable environments, they are generally moderate to large in size. Coordination problems are common. Examples of this form of organization include universities, hospitals, and large law firms. Some public school districts have many characteristics of the professional bureaucracy, particularly its aspects of professionalism, teacher autonomy, and structural um, looseness. For example, schools are formal organizations which provide complex services through highly trained professionals in an atmosphere of structural looseness. These characteristics tend to broaden the limits of individual discretion and performance, like attorneys, physicians, and university professors. Teachers perform in, class, um, in classroom settings in relative isolation from colleagues and superiors while remaining in close contact with their students. Furthermore, teachers are highly trained professionals who provide information to their students in accordance with their own style and they, um, they are usually flexible in delivery of content even within the constraints of the state and district mandated curriculum. Moreover, like some staff administrators, Teachers tend to identify more with their professions than with the organization. We also have the divisionalized form. The divisionalized form has the middle line as its key part. It uses the standardization of output as its prime coordinating mechanism, and it employs limited vertical decentralization. Decision making is decentralized at the divisional level. There is um, little coordination among the separate divisions. Corporate level personnel provide some coordination, thus each division itself is relatively centralized and tends to resemble a machine bureaucracy. The techno structure is located to, uh, I mean, at corporate headquarters to provide services to all divisions and its support staff is located within each um, division. Large corporations are likely to adopt the divisionalized form. Most school districts um, typically do not fit the divisionalized form. Exceptions are those very large school districts that have um, diversified service divisions distinctly separated into individual units or schools. For example, a school district may resemble the divisionalized form when it has separate schools for physically handicapped, emotionally disturbed, and learning disabled, a skills um, center for a potential dropout, a school for art and music students, and so on. The identifying feature of these school districts is, is that they have separate schools within a single school district, which have separate administrative staffs, 
budgets, and so on. Elementary and secondary school districts that have um, consolidated but retained separate administrative structures with one school board are also examples of the divisionalized form. As might be expected, the primary reason for a school district to adapt his form of structure um, is service diversity while retaining separate administrative structures. We also have the adhocracy. The adhocracy has the support staff as its key part, uses mutual adjustment as a means of coordination, and maintains selective patterns of decentralization. The structure tends to be low in formalization and decentralization. The techno structure is small because techni um, technical specialties, specialists rather, are involved in the organization's operative core. The support staff is large to support the complex structure. Adocracies engage in non-routine tasks and use sophisticated technology. The primary goal is innovation and rapid adaptation to changing environments. Adocracies typically are medium-sized, must be adaptable, and use resources efficiently. Example of adocracies include aerospace and electronics industries, research and development firms, and very innovative school districts. No school districts are pure adhocracies, but medium-sized medium -size school districts in very wealthy communities may have some of the characteristics of an adhocracy. The adhocracy is somewhat similar to H1965 organic organizations. The last very significant um, phrase we have here is the strategy and structure. The work begun by Chandler and extended by Mintzberg has laid the groundwork of an understanding of the relationship between an organization's strategy and its structure. The link between strategy and its structure is still in its infancy stage. Further research in this area, particularly in service organization, organizations like schools, will, will enhance school administrators' understanding of school organizations. In the meantime, School leaders must recognize that organization strategy and structure are related. We also have to note that um, Henry Mintzberg suggests that organizations can be differentiated along three basic dimensions. Again, these are the key part of the organization. That is the part of the organization that plays the major role in determining its success or failure. Number two is the prime coordinating mechanism. That is the major method the organization uses to coordinate its activities. And number three, the type of decentralization used that is the extent to which the organization involves subordinates in the decision-making process. Um, using the three basic dimensions, um, the key part of the organization, the prime coordinating mechanism, the type of decentralization, um, Minsberg suggests that the strategy an organization adapts and the extent to which it um, it practices that strategy result in the five structural configurations. These are the simple structure, the machine bureaucracy, professional bureaucracy, divisionalized form, and adhocracy. Again, those are the very important terms that we have to remember in regards to Mintzberg's coordinating mechanisms of structure. That would be all for my topic and thank you for listening.